Hi, everyone. This is Jennifer Bagnashi with Deep Believer. Today, we have a return guest. She was ushered into heaven. And when she was ushered into heaven, she was taken to the kingdom banquet. And she saw how elaborate and beautiful and beautiful. I mean, how elaborate it was. And when she did, she actually saw some people unable to get in. Not only that, she was taken also at another point to a lighthouse where she actually saw into the future. She saw what's happening now. She saw the revival. She saw what's to come. And she says, exposure is coming. Yvonne Atia, thank you so much for being with us again today. Jenny, thank you so much for having me. This is such an honor. Thank you. So tell us, let's talk about this kingdom banquet. You even call it even a wedding banquet. Tell us yeah. how did this all start? How did you even get to heaven? And then what was the inception of it all? Okay, amen. Well, you know, I was preparing for a show and uh, the show is called Jesus Through the Eyes of the Middle East. So it's trying to help a lot of people living in the West to understand the radical love of Jesus from a Middle Eastern perspective. So as I was deeply studying in the word, I came across Luke 14. And uh, this is a parable that Jesus taught about a banquet that is taking place in heaven. And I was just planning, studying, learning all the cultural understanding of this. And what I learned about this parable shocked me, Jenny, because you know, when you're just reading it on the surface, it reads like a normal parable, but there's a lot in it. And that's what led me into this encounter, which I'll talk about in a second. But in this particular um, parable, Luke 14, Jesus is telling his followers that when you invite or when you have a banquet, and this is very prophetic and very deep, he said, don't just invite your friends and your relatives and your rich neighbors. He said, but go out and invite the poor and the crippled and the lame and the blind. And again, that doesn't sit really well with us because you think about how we do uh, a banquet or even think about when you're inviting someone for like lunch or dinner. Hardly ever, right, do we trust or open up our homes to those who are crippled or blind or the homeless. Like, honestly, let's be very honest. When was the last time someone actually did that? Because the normal is that you would open up your house to those who you know. But the ways of the kingdom are contrary to the way of the way we understand life. And so Jesus is saying that there is a banquet and it's not just for relatives and friends, but it's for those who think that they are that they don't qualify to come into your house. This is who this banquet's for. And so the Bible says that someone came to Jesus and said to him, hearing this, a man sitting at the table said to Jesus, what a blessing it will be to attend a banquet in the kingdom. And when I read this, I was like, wow, the moment you read something and it's so amazing, your spirit picks it up before your mind does. So you're reading something and you're so excited. You know that God wants to take you somewhere or teach you something, but you just don't really understand. So it's in that time that you lean in and you just try and lend your ears more to the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus began to teach something. He said this, there was one day a man who prepared a great banquet. He said when the banquet was ready, he sent his servants to tell the guests, come, the banquet is ready. Now, what I really want to highlight before telling the encounter is that during during those days, meat was kept alive. What does that mean? It's not like today when you are inviting someone and you go out and you buy meat. In those days, there was no refrigerators. So they kept the animals alive, like the cows and the lambs. And so what they would normally do is before the day of the banquet, invitations would first go out. 
And that is very important to understand what's coming. So invitations would go out. I'd send you an invite and I say, hey, Jennifer, I'm having a banquet on this day. Would you like to come? You then would have to say yes. Once you say yes, I have a headcount. And based on the headcount, I will go out, slaughter the calf, slaughter the animals and prepare. So what I got to learn is in this banquet, invitations had already gone out and those guests already said yes. And then what happened on the day was absolutely shocking. The first one comes up with this excuse. And the first one said, I cannot come because I just purchased a field and I'm going out to inspect it. Now, reading this, you might think that could be a legitimate excuse. It's not. It's a full blown out lie because in the Middle East, most of the land is desert. There's hardly ever fertile field. So for someone to actually secure a field, this takes negotiation of months and years. So if he had called and said, hey, you remember this land that I was negotiating on for such a long time? Well, I just got a call today because if I don't secure it today, then it's going to go. Maybe that could be a legitimate excuse. But to do that, it's like calling up your husband and saying, hey, babe, I just purchased the house over the phone. There's no way this can happen. <laughs> so you know that this guest is a liar and that this guest is coming up with an excuse that's false. You then come to guest number two and he says this to Jesus. He says, I've just bought five pairs of oxen and I'm going out to test them. Again, full blown lie. Because in the Middle East, you never buy five oxen. You always buy them in pairs. You always buy either two or four or six. And not just that, you always test them first before you buy them. You don't buy them and go out and test them. So there's another one who's coming out with this full-blown excuse as to why they don't want to attend a banquet. The third one is the worst one. He said, I just got married and I have a woman with me. So he's, he's not even saying, sorry, I can't come. But he's saying, hey, I just got married and I've got a woman. I'm too busy right now. And you get to see the demonic agenda. Because if one guest cancels, the banquet can still go on. If two guests cancel, maybe the banquet can still go on. But if you have all your guests cancel, then there's a demonic agenda to destroy the banquet. And so in this place, Jesus said that the owner of the banquet is very angry. And he says that nothing is going to destroy this banquet. This banquet is beyond any destruction. And he says this, go out into the streets and invite the poor, invite the crippled, invite the blind, anyone who is willing to come. And as I was studying this, I began to weep because I was like, whoa, the banquet is going the no one can destroy the banquet. The only condition to enter the banquet is to have a willingness to be in that banquet. And so it says the servant went out and reported and said, hey, I invited everyone, but there is still room. He says, we'll go out to the byways and the highways because I want the banquet full. And as I was studying this, I was like, oh my God, this is a deep study. I learned so much about this parable, but my heart, Jenny, was ignited. There was a fire because the Holy Spirit began to point out truth. And wh what do you do when you are, when truth is exposed? So I was like, okay, I've got to put the dots together. There is a banquet that is happening in the kingdom. No one can destroy this banquet. The only condition is not because I pray more or fast more or become more religious. None of this. I must have a willingness. I must be willing because the servant went out to someone who was lame, who was blind, who was homeless. 
and said to him, hey, there's a banquet. You're invited to the banquet. Most people won't believe because it's like, I don't even know the host. Why, why did he even invite me? Is this a legit invite? And we've got to understand that back in those days, driving to someone's house for a banquet is not like today. They're not driving a day or two. Sometimes you're walking. Jesus walked from Galilee to Jerusalem. Sometimes it took days. So those people, they had to first believe that this is a legitimate invite. Then they have to be willing to come all the way to this host that they don't even know about and believe that they're invited to this banquet. And the Lord began to minister to my heart and said this to me, Yvonne, this banquet is going right now. But many of my people, they don't believe that they can even enter. And I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, most believers, they think that they first have to die before they can enter this banquet. And I was like, that's, that's actually true, God. He said, you don't. You already died in me. And you now live. And the life that you live right now, you cannot separate your life from me. You're in union with me. So through your union with Jesus, you can access this banquet. And so I became so excited. And every day in prayer, following this encounter and this teaching, my prayer was like, Lord, I would love to see the banquet. I would love to experience the banquet. I'd love to enter this banquet. And so as I am in prayer, Jenny, this, this happened on Tuesday, 10th of May of 2022, this particular encounter. So what actually happened is that I'm in prayer. I'm not expecting anything, just loving on Jesus. And he's just loving on me. And as I was in prayer, I get taken to this beautiful place. I'm standing outside of this place. But all I could hear was I could see that this mansion, there's a celebration going on because I heard the music from far and I saw the lights and even walking up I would never forget as I was walking up there was this beautiful glorious entry and in this entry I saw white horses lined up on both sides of the entry I then saw what I recall as a beautiful fountain and the water was so many different colors but what was so amazing was that even the water music was coming out of the water. This music was in sync and in harmony. Anywhere you went, the music was so in sync that it allowed every cell in your body to be filled with joy. I never had any cap. Normally you hear music with your ears, but I was hearing music with every single part of my body. And I was like, wow, I was walking so slow just because I felt like I was the bride. I was like walking into this parade and I didn't want to miss any part of it. Light was everywhere. Everything was being lit, but it wasn't the light that would hurt your eyes. It was a light that would relax your eyes, but it was, it was just so glorious. So I'm walking in. And as I walk in, I get to see this banquet and I've never seen anything like it. The banquet was this table. It was so long. It was that my eyes could not even reach the end of it. And I knew I could, I didn't need to look far for where God was because his presence was both defined, but it almost filled the whole place. There isn't a place you could walk without him, without seeing him or knowing that he was there or even feeling his presence. It was almost like he was at the head of the table, but then he sat next to every person that was sitting at the table. I look at this table and this is what I see. I saw food from literally every single part of the world. It was amazing. It was 
foods from Africa, foods from Asia, foods from India. It was all those fragrances, but yet all the fragrances just went together in this amazing unity. I saw candles everywhere. I saw candelabras and they were crystal and they looked so amazing. I saw fruit that was so huge. Like I remember seeing grapes that was bigger than my hand put together. And I was like reminded of um, what was mentioned in the Bible when they entered into the promised land and they brought those grapes. But everything was pleasing to the eye. I was remembering the book of Genesis when God created everything and says everything was pleasing to the eye. It was the type of fruit that you would pick up and stare at. It was like, what is this God? What could this be? And I saw myself just walking around the banquet so occupied with, oh, what is this? And oh, what is, what, what is that? There was this beautiful um, cloth that reached to the end of the floor. But then there was no floor because I'm looking underneath me. Everything is suspended. Yet people could still walk and people could still eat. But there was such joy. There was such, I, I don't have the, the words to, to speak about how every cell in your body is entering and accessing into this joy, rest and peace as you feel God if you are there I am I'm just I don't want to leave this place and so I walk around and I see this canopy and in this canopy the canopy was like this big shed but th there were people sitting and it was almost like they were sitting in like a little stage so I was sitting on this I sat with them and I was like telling them how beautiful is this banquet and they began to tell me their stories. And they began to tell me, oh, Yvonne, we, like you, have just been caught up in prayer. I was like, really? And they were like, yes. And I, I spoke to this lady and she said to me, I was so sick with this disease. And she didn't mention the name, but I knew what she was talking about. She had cancer. She had stage four cancer. And I'm just believing, Jenny, that even as viewers are watching this, there's going to be a release of anointing to bind and kill and destroy every demonic cell of cancer. Because this woman, she had this cancer. And she, when she said to me, as I was praying, and I said to her, what were you praying for? that brought you into this place she said oh i was praying to enter the the kingdom banquet just like you and i said really and she said to me yes everyone that you see here they're praying for what you're praying for so we all got caught up at the same time to get to view this banquet so she said just sit down and enjoy and so i was both looking and like a little girl just you know in wonderland it's like wow so i'm so occupied with hearing how all these people were caught up in the same place as i was caught up but how they were all witnessing the banquet as if they're watching this beautiful movie as to how they did like how they ate at the banquet and the thing is jenny as well when people were taking anything to eat it was being replaced supernaturally. So nothing was missing. So it's not like here when you take something that, that, that it's missing. It, there was no nothing missing. Everything was in abundance. And there were angels continuously bringing out different types and different foods. Um, the other thing as well, different wines. And all those wines were completely different colors. And as you were drinking the wine, you become more alert, you become more in tune with the spirit of God, and you become so in love with the king. And I saw so many people around God the Father, they just want to hang out with him. They're just like walking around and, and, and you can just see the smile on his face that his children are just entering into this place and that they're enjoying the banquet. And it was like he didn't want to go anywhere. His greatest joy was just in this place. 
So I'm in this place, loving this place, walking around, speaking to those in the canopy, speaking to those around the table, checking out the different fruits and the different foods. And all of a sudden, I get to see a glass door and outside of this beautiful banquet where all the celebration is happening, there's so many different groups of people and they were very hurting. They were, some of them were like just seated, sitting down. Some of them were weeping. Some were mourning. Some were laying on their back. And I said to the angel, why can't we ask them to come in? Like, why would they not come in and just witness the glory and the beauty and the kingdom and the power? And what he said to me, Jenny shocked me. He said to me, oh, Yvonne, invitations did go out, but they don't believe that they can enter. They don't believe. And the Lord reminded me, of when I was preparing this, how I was just saying, because meat used to always be kept alive, invitations would always go out before the banquet started. And he said to me, most of these people, due to the wounding of the heart, due to offense, due to unbelief, due to compromise, they do not believe that this is happening, that they, they do not believe. And I said to them, what am I called to do with this encounter? He said to me, every time you share this place that you entered and this place that you can come into, you are to tell my beloved people that this place is happening right now in the spiritual dimension and that every single person of my children who received the sacrifice of my son, Jesus, they can come in. They can receive abundance. They can receive their healing. They can hang out with God, our father, and they can live in the state of joy. They do not need to be out there. And so, Jenny, I came back from this encounter completely wrecked by the love of God, by the joy of God. And I said, God, I promise you that this is going to be a time where I will tell your beloved children that they can come in. That is beautiful. I mean, just the detail that you remember and I'm actually really happy that you mentioned this parable because this is one of my personal favorite parables that you rarely hear preached in churches ever. So, I mean, thank you so much for that. So I want to ask, what do you mean when you say that it's happening now? So right now we know and we understand that Jesus was raised to life and that he is seated right now at God's right hand. What is he doing? When we come to think he's not just sitting there bored, he is sitting there and God the Father is celebrating the resurrection of his son, Jesus. So what I got to understand is that heaven is a real place. We enter heaven because we have united to Jesus. The book of Hebrews says this, that we can come into God's throne room of grace with boldness. So we are not coming in as beggars. We come in because when God the Father sees us, he sees Jesus and therefore we have access. So if we have access, what do we have access into? We have access into the heavenly dimension. So we need to remember this, Jenny. When God created Adam, God created Adam in, in Eden. Eden is an open portal of heaven where the presence of God was always there with Adam. When Adam fell, this place was shut and the Bible tells us that God placed the angels so no one can enter into this place and live forever because we got contaminated with sin. When Jesus paid the price, he restored us 
into Eden, into this place of abundance where we can enter. And this is only the banquet hall is only a dimension of what is there in heaven. There's so much more that is up there. But as God's beloved children, we have access by the blood of Jesus to enter into a place of celebration, a place of abundance, a place to be around God the Father. And if someone's watching this and they're controlled by a spirit of religion, it's going to be very hard because it's going to be like, but who do you think you are? Only the, the saints can enter this. Well, you have been sanctified by his blood. Jesus said, you are holy because I am holy. This is what the Bible tells us, that be holy as God is holy. So our holiness does not come because of anything righteous that we have done. This is what the book of Titus chapter 3 verses 5 says it says that we are holy because of what he has done so when we as children enter this realm we will understand that ever since the day that Jesus resurrected into the heavenly realm this banquet started because I was asking the angel, how long has been this going on? I didn't know this was going on. He said to me, the starting date was the day that God the Father resurrected his beloved son into glory. This is when this celebration started. The moment that God the Father resurrected Jesus and Jesus ascended into the heavenly realm, he ascended into this banquet i mean jesus resurrected and entered this huge celebration i was reminded of luke 15 when this younger son left the house when he came back and, got, and his father restored him what did the father do he said to his servants go out and kill the fattened calf because this son of mine was lost and now he is found so god the father the angel said to me god the father did the same he said this son of mine you know he was killed but by my power by my grace i resurrected him so let the party begin so this is when this banquet actually began it is going on every single moment as a believer when i ask when i by faith receive the heavenly invite to enter then I give permission to the Holy Spirit to escort me. And this is the thing. The Holy Spirit, Jenny, is super gentle. If I reject, there's going to be no push for me to go. But if I humbly ask, and Jesus said this to his disciples. He said, you did not receive because you did not ask. Ask and I will give you so that your joy may be so God the Father wants us to enter a state of ecstatic joy where we get to see him. We get to see his abundance. And let me tell you, you could people could be living in a state of luck right now. When they enter in the spiritual dimension and they see that even when you eat a fruit, it's automatically replaced. There is nothing missing. There's always abundance and there's always, it's always, that banquet is always full. You will understand how to access that out of his glorious riches in heaven. So you can begin to decree and declare God as it is in heaven, as there is a banquet that is full in heaven, I decree and I declare that the same abundance and fullness and joy and glory and healing will be taking place in my life here. So like Adam, Jenny, I'm called to live in a place of heaven and earth at the same time. Because that is when God restored Adam. We need to understand this, that we live in Christ. Ephesians 2, 6, it says that he raised us up and seated us in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. So I am living here on earth in my physical body, but my spirit is living 
in the earthly, in the heavenly realms, in Christ Jesus. And I can have access to this banquet. Enjoy the celebration. Get Step out of my depression. Step out of my sadness, my anxiety, my fear. As I enter in this place and I allow the presence of the heavenly king who is celebrating the resurrection of his son to come upon me, to change me, and to allow me to come back and walk in victory on this planet. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yvonne, and then again, how did you get there? Were you in worship? Were you in prayer? How did you get from earth to heaven? That's a really good question, Danny. Let me tell you, when I was first filled in the Holy Spirit, I love praying in the Spirit. I absolutely love it. And most believers don't know what to do with it. And they really don't press into praying with their heavenly language because they're like, I don't understand it. So why press in? But I've learned something that when we speak in our heavenly language, this is the door. This is the entry. So what I normally do is that I take time to pray in my heavenly language because that is when I allow the Holy Spirit to pray in and through me. But then I come to a place of absolute total stillness. In that place of stillness is a time when I allow God to take every worry, that's every burden, everything that is stopping me from entering into this place. So on this day that I was that I received this encounter, I was enjoying the king, embracing him, just loving on Jesus and just releasing to him every thought, every worry. And in the back of my mind, he knew that I had such a desire to enter into this place. Now, when you come to a place of complete rest, and the Bible tells us that it says, be still and know that I am God. In our stillness, we find God and we rise above everything that's worrying us. So I was in this place and God is so faithful. When we ask for anything, even though sometimes we forget, he does not forget. And so when I was in this place, God begins to open up your spiritual eyes and ears, but he does it bit by bit. So I was in the prayer closet and I heard in the spiritual dimension music. And I knew, and this is how it begins by a very small thing. You remember in the Old Testament when Elijah was praying for rain. And his servant came and said to him, we don't see abundance in rain. We just see a cloud as small as a man's hand. What was he doing? He thanked God for it because he knew that this is how God begins an encounter. It's in the small, still voice. So when I began to hear a sound of music and celebration, I knew that God is leading me into. I didn't know the whole encounter, but I began to be continue to be still, continue to love on Jesus, continue to welcome Holy Spirit, and continue to say, Holy Spirit, whatever it is that you want to show me, I want you to show me. All of a sudden, it's not only my ears that are hearing the music, my eyes are now seeing the mansion. And so we begin to operate. God uses our senses in order to allow us to enter into the heavenly realms. So at the start, Jenny, it's your heart. Your heart is connecting to God. You're not seeing anything. You're just loving Jesus. Then all of a sudden, your inner ears or your spiritual ears, they're hearing music. And you're like, what is that music? Is that like a worship song that you want me to sing? But I couldn't figure out. That wasn't a song I knew. And so I was just like, okay, God, I'm hearing you. You know, and just pressing into here. All of a sudden, your eyes are like, oh, there's a mansion. Oh, there's a walkway. And all of a sudden, you enter a place where God redeems your imagination in your mind all of a sudden, the mind now opens up. So how does it start? 
one thing to another, the heart begins to fall in love with Jesus. The ears open up and they hear something. The eyes begin to see the mansion. Then the mind is completely opened up, completely under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, you see this huge walkway where I saw the white horses on both sides and the fountain where the water was different colors. So then what do I do? In the spiritual dimension, I allow myself to move in. So I'm walking in, I'm seeing myself walking in. And that's when God knows, okay, she accepted the invitation. She is responding to the heavenly call to enter. And if you're walking and you're seeing steps, go up the steps. If you're seeing a door, walk in the door. And you will understand that in the spiritual place, you can talk and move and touch and feel and you begin to see that in the spiritual dimension it does take practice but it does take trust it do, you need to understand that you cannot make up something like that in your mind you can't dream that up this is the place where god begins to show you you begin to act in obedience as a Little girl walking into a candy store, you're tasting, you're smelling, you're eating, you're asking. And it's then when God's like, okay, I can trust her. She trusts me. She believes me. I'm going to show her the banquet hall. I'm going to show her this place. I'm gonna... And let me tell you, there's always a big smile on God the Father's face as he is showing you this place. Because you're like, oh my God, wow, that's amazing. And you're like, and he allows you to walk in. He allows you to eat and to touch and to experience and to smell. There's no rush in heaven. There's a, there's a total state of rest and joy. And you never worry. You never worry that you're running out of time. In actual fact, I felt that time was becoming still as I was in that presence. I was given time to enjoy and the Lord said to me, life gets so busy that we hardly get to enjoy anything. We hardly get to enjoy our meals. We hardly get to enjoy our children because we're always thinking of the next best thing to do. In heaven, it's not like that. In heaven, you're in a state of total rest and total embrace. All you want to do is just sit there and indulge in what God the Father has given you as his daughter. So are you saying because the Bible says that we're seated in heavenly places with the Lord, our spirit sees what our spirit sees, I guess, in heaven when, when you transfer from earth to heaven? Absolutely. And we've got to trust in that, Jenny. The problem is most believers don't trust that. They don't know how to walk in their true identity as those who are seated in Christ Jesus. I love how the Apostle Paul continued to use this phrase, in Christ. He always says, if anyone is in Christ, they're a new creation. So we need to start believing that we are in Christ. And if you are in Christ, will God the Father allow you into the heavenly realms? If you are in Christ, you have been forgiven. You have been restored. So we need to begin to understand. And this is the key because most people watching this, they're like, okay, I'd love that. I'd love to enter into this place. But then they look at their weaknesses. They look at, oh, but my prayer life is not in place. Oh, but I don't do this. And I want you to shift out of that mentality to walking in your true and real identity as someone who is in Christ, in union with Jesus. And prayer time has to be a time of stepping into wonderland. If you've watched this movie, you know, if you've gone into these places where like, wow, I've just stepped into the heavenly realms and I can access that. In the book of Revelation, it says that to give ears to the spirit, the spirit gives ears to the believer. So when we are in that realm, God, I want ears to hear because just because you have ears it doesn't mean that you can hear just because you have eyes it doesn't mean you can see so I love how 
the apostle Paul prays and says that I pray that the heart that the eyes of your understanding will be opened. In other words, your mind has spiritual eyes to see, but it hasn't been trained because a lot of the time in church life, you're not trained to have those eyes opened and you're not trained to trust that what you see is actually God. Most of the time you are in doubt thinking, is this God or is this not God? Let me tell you this, Jenny, because this is amazing. I was ministering to someone one day and she was Buddhist. And she came to me and she, she said to me, I would love to know who Jesus is because I don't believe that Jesus is God. And I said to her, okay. And she said, I am a very strong uh, in my Buddhist belief. And I said to her, okay, if I try and convince you, you won't believe. And I think I need to lead you into the heavenly realms and let God show you who Jesus is. And she said to me, how could you do that? And people are like, how can she enter the heavenly realms if she's not even a believer? Because that's how we are controlled by spirits of religion. But if God wants to allow anyone in the heavenly realms, he can do that. He said that to, to the disciples when he was speaking about John. He said, if I want John to live forever, to do that I'm God so I remember Jenny I said to her close your eyes so she closed her eyes and I said is it okay if I lay hands over you she said yes do that so I just laid hands and I said Holy Spirit could you come and help your dear girl to know who Jesus is come and just show her and that's what the Holy Spirit does the Holy Spirit shows you and so she could she starts to shake because she just felt she was completely under the Holy Spirit's influence. And then I said to her, okay, Jenny, I, I, okay, close your eyes and begin to, um, I'm going to pray a prayer to have your spiritual eyes open. She said, okay. So I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would open her spiritual eyes and ears to see and hear what you are about to show her. And then I said to her, okay, what is Holy Spirit showing you now? And I began to lead her into the heavenly realms. I said, I'm leading you into the heavenly realms. Keep your eyes closed. Let me know what you're seeing right now. And she begins to weep. And she begins to tell me, okay, I see this beautiful garden. And I said, okay, can you walk into the garden? Is there like a pathway? She said, yes. And I said, okay, walk through it. So she was walking through it. And then she said to me, oh, and I see a white horse. And I said, okay, are you able to get on the horse? She said, um, yes, I can. And I said, get on the horse. And she said to me, she starts crying. And I said, to, and I said, why are you crying? She said, because I couldn't get on the horse. It was so high and I couldn't get on. But I saw someone sitting on the horse and he literally grabbed me like I was a little girl and he sat me in front. And I said, okay, are you seated there now? She said, yes. And I said to him, her, okay, what's he doing now? She said, he just wants to drive me around the garden on the white horse. And I said, okay, let him. Couple of minutes later, she's weeping, she's shaking. I said to her, could you ask him who he is? And she said, okay. So she asks him and he says to her, I am the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. She comes back shaking, crying for 40 minutes. I could not stop her. And I said to her, how are you going to respond? She said to me, I'm going to become a Christian. And I said, why? She said, because when he told me his name, he didn't say I'm Jesus. He said to me, I am the Lord Jesus Christ. When he said the Lord, he is the Lord. Now, she became a believer. And I tell you something, Jenny, I could not take away that experience from her because it was the Lord himself ministering to her, letting her know who he is. And the Lord said to me, it's not by might and it's not by power. It's not by convincing people. If the heavenly realms is a real place, if it's an open place, 
we have authority to lead those who are seeking, those who are thirsty, those who are searching into this place where they can hear God for themselves. They can see God for themselves and therefore their encounter becomes real. And the Lord said this to me, Jenny. He said, that is what I did with the apostle Paul. I opened up a portal and I allowed him to hear my voice. And I told him, why are you persecuting my church? That encounter led him not to be Saul, but to be Paul. And he became the most amazing apostle ever because the heavenly realms were opened up around him and he got to see it for himself. No one, and he said this later, he said, the gospel I received, no one handed it over to me. It was the Lord Jesus Christ himself telling me this. So we need to let people know that God wants you in there, that you qualify, that it's his desire and his joy. You just need to believe and receive. That's all it is. It's so simple that some people think that it's so hard. Mm, wow. Wow, Yvonne, just the fact that you ushered that lady, you helped her, you walked her through, through meeting Jesus. She literally met Jesus. That is so beautiful. And let's, let's talk about heaven for a second again. You said when you went there, everything had music to it. What kind of music was it? And was it music that was just instrumental or was it voices? What kind of music was it? What I heard was actually instrumental music. Um, I didn't hear anyone singing like in a microphone or anything, but what was so beautiful and what was so amazing is that there was a sync, like I saw flowers singing that music. I saw it was like even the fountain that I was, that I saw as I was walking in that divine music that radiates every, it was this type of music that enabled every cell in your body to enter a place of joy. I don't know how to explain it because even here on earth, I have not heard this type of music. There's many beautiful music that we have and the times that you hear instrumental music, that's beautiful. But this was different. This was everything was singing. Like how do flowers sing? How do, how do water sing? And when I asked, I actually asked the Lord about that. I said, Lord, how can, how can they all sing? And he said this to me, that everything in creation is giving glory to me. Everything that you see, the water is giving glory to me, the flower. And he said to me, when you worship me and when you honor me, you are joining what they are already doing. And so worship and honoring God and even hearing this music is a way of giving glory to God because even those flowers recognize that they're present because God made them present. So they are giving him glory. The water is giving him glory. Every element in heaven is giving God glory. So we get to understand that this is because what I saw in heaven is the redeemed creation. And the Lord was showing me that this was the state of creation before the fall. Everything was worshiping God. But after the fall, today you get to see flowers here on earth and roses. They look beautiful, but there's no music coming out of them. Because the, even now, the creation is being affected by the fall. But as the book of Romans says, that creation itself is groaning because it wants to be relieved from this effect of the curse. What I saw in heaven was what a fully redeemed creation would look like when everything around me has life. And the Lord said this to me, when I created everything, everything had life. And the life that was in everything wasn't just a life when you see a flower growing and then in a couple of days dying. The death is a result of the curse. That's why you see a flower dying. That's why we age. But in this redeemed state, you enter a place of resurrection. 
And the Lord was showing me that resurrection is the highest level. Why? If you are alive, you die. But if you have resurrected, you cannot die. You bypass death. So he was showing me, Yvonne, everything you see in this state right now is a state of resurrection. Those flowers that are singing, it's because they have fully resurrected. The water that's got different, beautiful, glorious colors. It wasn't even normal water. It was like they were, they had like shimmering crystals that was coming out of the water. It was so glamorous and so soothing to the eye that when you look at it, your eyes are like, wow, how beautiful beautiful is this place. God was reminding me of Jacob and his ladder when he woke up and said, whoa, this has to be like a place where God lives. When he said, this is the gate of heaven. So when you enter this place, everything is in sync. Everyone is worshiping this beautiful music that is just bringing life and light to you. And it's amazing because there's no boundaries. It's not like here where you see walls and your eyes cannot see beyond concrete walls. You enter a completely new dimension where you can see through everything. Even the Lord said to me, your eyesight is fully restored because this eyesight is meant to look through everything. There should be no boundaries. So you enter a place of resurrection. And this is when I met this friend that I saw in heaven. And she said to me that she had cancer. And when she entered into this place, she was completely healed. And the Lord said this to me, Jenny. He said, my remnant church will be entering this place of glory because it's that glorious state that brings healing. It's no longer using your giftings. Your giftings is when you pray for someone and through a gift of healing, they get healed. But when the glorious state of heaven enters a place, people get healed, people get saved. And that is what's coming. What is coming right now, and even with the revivals that you see, during those revivals, so many people said, we got healed and we got delivered. No one prayed for them. It was the glorious presence of the heavenly realms entering and invading this place. Why? Because the people were worshiping God from all of their heart. So therefore, heaven is attracted to when we worship the king. So the music that I heard, everyone was singing the same thing. You know, it wasn't a song. It was very gentle, light music that was so soothing. But when you get to see everyone, everything that you see, I've never seen that obviously happen here on earth. Did you know, Yvonne, before the flood, because this goes along with what you saw on the banquet table, the big grapes and all this. Uh, I There were some researchers and some scientists and some, uh, I don't know if it's archaeologists, but I know some scientists they even said that they actually truly believe that fruit and plant life were bigger than it is now. So before the flood, everything was bigger. So that coincides with what you said, how the grape was bigger and you, you compared it to the, the garden, how, you know, everything was back to how the garden was because they, they said even the animals were bigger and all this stuff, but especially the fruit, the produce, the, the plants, everything was bigger back then. So we're going to be eating some big fruit, <laughs> some, some big spinach leaves. Um, yeah. And uh, when you saw the people there, were did you see a mix of people who had passed away who were in heaven now? Or was it just people who were praying like you were praying and they were coming together? So the people that I saw under the canopy, they were all people that were living right now, like me here in different parts of the world. But very amazingly they came across the banquet kingdom banquet table and they were asking god for the same thing so i am sure there were other canopies and other people and i'm sure there was another place for those who died and are now with with the lord but that's not what i saw on this day what i saw on this day under this canopy was the group of people 
who were like, oh, we got caught up and they knew, they knew each other. They even, they even knew me. And somehow in my heart, when they said this, I was knowing them, but I don't know who are they now. And it's, it's actually so amazing, but we can meet each other in heaven. Isn't that awesome? If I am praying, seeking God right now, someone else is praying, seeking God in another state or in another country, it's completely normal to speak to each other in this heavenly realm and to tell each other. But what I was hearing under the canopy is testimony after testimony after testimony. There was, so this lady she was saying to me, oh, I had this disease. She didn't mention the name. And later on, I was like asking God, why didn't she tell me cancer? Because I knew in my heart what it was. She said to me, oh, those names are not mentioned in heaven. They don't exist. Those wow. names don't enter here, you know? So she was just telling me of her testimony. And I just want to encourage someone that cancer does not exist in heaven. If this na those names are not, these are names we give to diseases and illnesses here on earth. So this and I, and sometimes we get really scared because we're like, oh, stage four cancer, that sounds horrible. But in, in heaven, what is known is one name. And, and God the Father said this to me, there's only one name here. We don't mention any other name. And I laughed, I'm like, I, I know what it is. It's the name of Jesus that is above every condition, every sickness, every ailment. So that is the only name that's mentioned in heaven. So people are like, you know, when I ask Jesus, this is what I did for me. So under the canopy, all I was hearing was testimonials. It was people who believed, people who even believed that they could enter. And I saw different races. It wasn't just one people from different colors, you know, and it wasn't even as well that we were all the same age because I saw children even sitting under this canopy, but even young children who dared to believe that heaven is for them and that they could enter and they could enter the banquet hall and they were so well behaved. Like they weren't, you know, running around or causing and No, they were so well behaved. It was, it was actually amazing. So I got to learn, Jenny, that this is a normal place. This is, it is absolutely normal Christianity. It is Christianity 101. But we have become so occupied with religion that we almost made it impossible for us to enter those places. We placed a lot of heavy burdens on people. Letting people believe that, you know, God, if, if you ask the ordinary believer today and you say this to them, and I always ask this question, do you think God is pleased with you? A lot of people will be like, I, I, I'm not sure. But that's, that, that's a lie. The truth is God is not just pleased. God is ecstatic. God is just in love. God is just like, this is what my hand created. It's like you being a mother. How do you feel when you look at your girls? How do you feel even when they do the wrong thing, right? Even when they mess up, deep in your heart, you're thinking you guys are the cutest thing ever. <laughs> you're so biased. Why? Because they're your girls, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's how God the Father looks at us even when there's a weakness or there's a struggle and God's like they're just learning they're just so cute they'll just get up and try again I'm gonna help them Holy Spirit can you help them get up and try again but he is ecstatic and so when I begin to see myself this way it would be super easy to wake up in the morning and say, Father, I'd, I'd love to come into this place of rest, come into the heavenly realms and just hang out with you, you know? And this is the thing, when you're so comfortable to somebody and they're coming over your house, you're not thinking, what do I do first? Like, do I give him a drink? Do we watch a movie first? Or no, you're just like, just come and hang out with me. There's no agenda. There's no program. But we've placed a lot of programs even in our prayer life. It's like, okay, when I pray, I'm going to wor put worship music. I'm going to read a chapter in the Bible. I'm going to, and God's like, could you just come and hang out? Like, just hang out with me, please. Well, speaking of hanging out, so there's people watching 
who are wondering and hoping to experience what you've experienced and all these other people, because you've even proven that you're not the only person who was there. There were so yeah. many other people who were there who hadn't died, who were on earth, but was experiencing the same thing because they asked for it and believed. So now people are watching now and they're like, I really want this. I really want to experience God. I really want to experience heaven. I want to experience this banquet that Yvonne is talking about. How do they get there? <laughs> Well, the first thing we need to do, Jenny, and I'd love to, you know, pray at the end, but the first thing that we do this, and I'm going to be so practical and so real, is that this is what I did. I grabbed a piece of paper and a pen, and I wrote down, why do I believe that I am unable to enter this place? That's the first thing. And a lot of, and you will come up with a lot. So the first thing for me was, I was filled with doubt and unbelief that this is even real to the level that I was reminded when someone years ago um, told me you could be filled in the spirit. And I didn't believe it. I was like, I'm already a believer. There's nothing else to me for me. So you have to come to a place of discontentment. Discontentment means I am not happy where I am right now. And I want more. That is the first thing. And what that does is it creates hunger. And I'm, when we pray, I'm going to pray for that. I'm going to pray that God would release this burning hunger so that you can enter in. It's when you're hungry that you run to eat. It's when you're hungry that you begin to prepare a meal. But if you're not hungry and you're like, I have all I, it's, it's like um, uh, Revelation 3. When the angel speaking to the church in Laodicea, the angel said this. You say that you are wealthy and you do not need anything. And then he says, I'm here to tell you that you are blind and that you need the refined gold. Because he says, you are neither hot nor cold. And these are strong words. I wish I can vomit you. What he's saying is I'm calling a believer into a life of being hot. You want to be hungry. You want to be expectant. You want God to do something for you. So that's the first thing. The second thing is we renounce every demonic belief and lie that we believed. And every excuse. When I was reading the story, there was a lot of excuses that those people made as to why they cannot come to the banquet. Most of the excuses are lies, and I try to prove that. So whatever excuse is in your head, it's a hindrance. It acts as a wall, and God will not remove it for you. God already provided everything. So all we need to do is, number two, is we need to begin to renounce unbelief. We begin to renounce doubt. If there's a wounding of the heart, if you are offended at God, if you're thinking, God, why did you allow my son to die? Why did you allow my mom to get cancer? We think that God allowed. And that's another topic for another day. But God never allows sickness and disease because Jesus paid for the on the cross. So how can God allow something Jesus paid for? We need to understand we're in a spiritual battle. So we need to work on ourselves in the way of, God, I'm not offended at you anymore. I want to come in union with you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for being there for me. Where, where am I going with that? I am coming into a place of gratitude. And whenever there is gratitude, we enter. It says, the Bible says that we enter his courts with thanksgiving. And here I dropped a big nugget. When I live in a state of thankfulness, oh my Lord, what happens is that the heavenly courts are open. All of a sudden, your heart is so warmed up and then you begin to rest. You begin to enter. You begin to another thing as well. We, and I'm going to do that in prayer. You begin to open, speak a prayer where you command the opening of your spiritual eyes, ears, minds, and hearts. Because just because you have physical eyes, it doesn't mean they see. They can just see the physical reality, but they don't see the spiritual reality. So the moment you rebuke spiritual blindness, you rebuke spiritual deafness, spiritual muteness, 
what happens is you are now entering and all of a sudden, Jimmy, heaven becomes a real place. It's a place you can walk, hang out, speak, laugh, rest, do everything that you can. And even though you could be at work, busy on your computer, you know that you're somewhere else. You learn to train yourself that like Adam, you are living in heaven at all times and you are living on earth at all times. And it's the understanding that you walk into. When we first learn this, maybe we can only practice it for five minutes because it's hard. Day two, you practice it for like 10 minutes. Day three, you practice it for like 20 minutes where you become aware I'm in heaven and I am on earth and I'm, the, I'm in a place of rest and peace and joy at all times. And I'm never going to allow what happens here on earth to dictate what's happening in heaven because God's got it worked out. He's got it done. And so as you keep going, you become trained. And the book of Hebrews says that. He says that you train your senses. So you begin to train. And so as time goes by, you are someone who always lives in heaven. You never step out of that realm. You are living there, breathing there, resting there. And at the same time, you are aware that you are living on earth. And let me tell you, Jenny, those who practice that, I know that the early church fathers practice that. I know that many people, as they practice that, depression, fear, sadness, and anxiety, it just goes. And all of a sudden, they know one thing, God worked it out. God's got it all done. And so we rest. And so that is a place that is just a simple, practical for those hearing this, even to go back and write those steps down. And when we pray, I will lead you into those steps. But we just need to understand why am I praying the way I'm praying? It's to lead you into the heavenly realms. Amen. So do you believe that this um, kingdom banquet, marriage banquet, do you believe that this was the marriage supper of the lamb? And when do we get to eat with all this food on the table? <laughs> I feel, I believe, Danny, that the supper of the lamb will be definitely taking place at Jesus' second coming. Um, and so I feel that what is happening right now is a celebration of the resurrection, of the resurrected son, that this joy, this banquet is happening right now. I mean, I saw people eating and there was all different types of food from so many different countries. Whether this is going to be the one that is mentioned in the book of Revelation or the, the other one that's mentioned in the book of Revelation will take place at Jesus' second coming. I'm not 100% certain and I certainly don't want to make it up. But all I experienced is that when I said, God, if this banquet's happening right now, I want to experience it. And I experienced that and not just once. This is the other good thing. It wasn't only once. There was many other times in prayer where I would be exhausted of something, tired of something. And all of a sudden, I'm in this place. And God's like, you need to come to your home and rest. Because you come here, you're energized, you're full of joy. That's when you can continue on with this stuff. So I'm not sure if both are the same, but I did see people eating. And I did see so many different cultures. I even saw different country flags that were all around the table. And I saw something beautiful that I forgot to mention. Every single country was represented. And even when I asked God, God, why are all these flags? He said to me, because in every part of the world, I have faithful believers who are believing in me. So we need to understand that wherever you're watching this from right now, wherever country you are in right now, you qualify to enter into this glorious, glorious realm. That is amazing. That is so amazing. So Yvonne, let's move over to the lighthouse. Yes. So you said that you were taken in an open vision to this lighthouse and not only did you see what's happening now, so basically you saw into the future, because this was last year, last April, you saw the revival that's happening now. And not only that, you saw the exposure that is going 
to happen. Yvonne, take us there. Amen. So um, this happened, Jenny, April 29th um, of last year, but it started off being an ordinary day. And I love the presence of the Lord to me going to prayer. As I said, it's going to Wonderland because I just never know what happens. I never know when I'm going to finish. But I'm in this place. And this was a day I remember so clearly because I came into the prayer room with a lot of worries. Um, a lot was going on and I was very burdened, if I can be honest. And so I'm sitting down in prayer and I felt like, I shouldn't really occupy God's mind with all of my problems. I should just put everything away and just begin to worship God and praise God. And I heard God say to me, no, you need to give to me all your worries. I want to have them. And I was even reminded later on of the verse that says, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. And I was like, oh, you care. You care about everything. And not just that, you want me to cast them on you. And I figured something out that as I was giving God every worry and every care, these worries were leaving my mind permanently. It was like, and the Lord said to me, this is the key to effective prayer. Because when you don't do that, these thoughts sit there and they hinder you from receiving more. But when you verbally tell them to me, you know, I heard them, I took them away and they leave your mind. So this was that day. And I began to give God the whole list. I was like, God, this is going on and I'm believing you for this and this is happening. And all these thoughts were leaving my mind. And I saw myself on this day when I began to pray. I, it seemed like a very warm day, but I was wearing so many layers of clothing and I didn't know why am I wearing so many layers when the weather is actually hot. When I was praying and every time I gave God a thought that worried me, one layer of clothing was coming off and another layer of clothing was going off. And I was like looking at myself and the Lord said to me, look at yourself and you'll know when to stop. And I kept on looking at myself and more layers and more layers until I reached a place where I only had, it wasn't even like a layer, but it was this thin shimmery dress that was so cooling. It was silk. And it even made me feel cool to the level that I didn't feel like I was wearing anything heavy. So I'm sitting with this shimmering, light, cooling dress, loving God's presence. And all of a sudden, I feel myself becoming so light, light in my head. And my eyes are open, Jenny, and I see a lighthouse. It was beautiful. It was a lighthouse that was on a hill. And... It had a small door and I was standing right in front of the door. And I remember that before I entered this lighthouse, I was kneeling down and I was studying the book of Daniel before this day. So I'm kneeling down before the door opened up for me. And that's the thing with heavenly encounters, you don't need to do anything. If there's a door, the door would just open. All you have to do is just walk in. So I see the door and the door is not open. And I'm just, I'm just on my knees. And I begin to remember that I was reading the book of Daniel. And I hear myself saying, praise the name of God forever and ever for all wisdom and power belong to God. He controls, this is actually Daniel chapter 2 from verses 20 to 22. I was meditating on that for about a week and I am kneeling down and I'm saying this, he controls the course of life events. He removes kings and he sets up king. He gives wisdom and knowledge. And I am repeating this. He controls the course of world events. He sets up kings and he removes kings. And that was my prayer. It wasn't like a prayer that you'd hear God give me this. Or I had already given everything to God. 
And now I enter the place of real intercession where I'm interceding for demonic rulers and authorities and kings to be uprooted and for godly kings to be installed. And as I'm praying, Jenny, this door opens up. And I feel, okay, this is, God is inviting me. And I knew that the moment that the door opened up, I immediately felt the presence of God. Immediately felt this warm embrace that is drawing me in. And I'm entering in with this shimmery dress that is so cooling. And in the lighthouse, it wasn't hot like it was outside. It was so cool. And I saw a round staircase that went around the lighthouse. And I was invited to go up. But how did I go up? I was continuously repeating this prayer. And every time I continue to say, you control world events. You uproot kings and you install kings. I was going up. Every time I repeat that I was going up. I was going up. So going up in the spiritual dimension is not like here where you're taking steps up a building. You do this through worship. You do this through desiring God. And all of a sudden you are moving. And I knew that my spirit was moving until I got to the end and the top of the lighthouse. And all of a sudden I'm able to see through concrete building that lighthouse, I could see right through it. And what I first saw disturbed me because I saw those demonic establishments. It was almost like demonic territories. And there were like portals. There were demonic portals from underneath. So from the outside, they may just look like an ordinary building to you. But underneath, there was a demonic portal that was empowering them, lifting them, supporting them. And around them, and even on the inside, I saw altars. And I saw people wearing masks. Those masks, masks may have looked pretty because they had glitters all over them. But they were hiding demonic people. And they were all offering rituals and doing demonic sacrifices and even the colors that I saw disturbed me the lights that I saw I knew that it's such a demonic place and I was saying to God God what are these places and the Lord said this to me he said to me these are demonic establishments and I said but God why do they look so strong why are they like thriving he said to me they being empowered by my people and I said by your people he said yes because a lot of my people are living a life of compromise and by compromise they are worshiping them they are equipping them they're even supporting them without knowing that they are supporting them and I was like really really disturbed and I said Lord I want to worship you I want to honor you how do I do that and he says to me this, Jenny, he says, I want you to read the book of Revelation. And I'm like, the book of Revelation? There are many believers. They're scared to read this book, God. And all of a sudden, I get to hear this beautiful verse being sung and repeated. To you be the honor. To you be the kingdom. To you be the power. And that is that verse is being repeated. My ears are open and I hear the heavenly choir decreeing and declaring to you be the power, to you be the glory, to you be the honor forever and ever. Amen. And I begin to lift up my hands and join the heavenly choir. And I begin to say, Lord, to you alone be the honor. To you alone be the glory. And Jenny, as I am decreeing that his kingdom and his rule will be taking over our land and our nation, my eyes are open and I get to see many, 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 many lighthouses all around the United States in different states and in different even countries. And they were on a hill and my eyes were open to so many godly intercessors 
they are kneeling down in their lighthouses praying the very same prayer that I was praying to you be the glory to you be the honor and it was almost like we were in separate lighthouses but somehow we were all holding hands and somehow I could see the heavenly choir just surrounding us as our worship got stronger and stronger and stronger I see that those demonic establishments, they were exposed and they were collapsing and they collapsed from the inside out. And I said to the Lord, why is that so important? Why did they not collapse from the outside in? He said to me, because when exposure comes to those demonic establishments, what normally happens is they begin to fight against each other. And they begin to break on the inside. And the Lord reminded me, you know, when Jesus said that when a kingdom is divided up against itself, that's when it collapsed. Well, he said to me, that's what's happening right now, even to places in government, even to places where there's a lot of satanic rituals happening right now. The Lord loves the United States. God has his hand on this country. So he is saying to me that in this place, even those demonic establishments, they will will be exposed but they will be breaking from the inside out that will be coming against each other and you'll see them collapsing the way Jericho was collapsing and after that Jenny I look around and there are sparkles and those sparkles it's almost I tell you exactly what it looked like if you've ever been on a plane and you're landing and it's nighttime, normally from the plane, you see a lot of darkness, but then you see spots of lights as the plane is landing. And as the plane lands even closer, you see that those lights are increasing different parts of the land. That's what I saw. I saw the map of the world and I saw different lights but as I was getting closer and closer and closer, those lights all around the world, all around the country, they were increasing and intensifying until I saw places where there was clusters of lights. And I said to God, what are these clusters of lights? He said, this is revival. He said, revival is coming and you will see it spark in the midst of nameless people, in the midst of the least expected states and the least expected countries. And it will happen like this. There'll be one revival in this state and then another revival in this state. And you will see them all popping up so quickly until you see those clusters of lights because my people are interceding. And whenever I have those encounters, Jenny, I always ask God, what is the message? What message do you want me to come and speak to your people? And the Lord says, I want my people to worship me wholeheartedly. To you be the honor. In other words, honor belongs to God alone. To you be the kingdom. The kingdom is his alone. To you be the glory. We need to repent from being lukewarm. We need to repent from compromise. We need to repent from doing a little bit of God and a little bit of the world. God's calling his remnant church to be totally consecrated unto him. It is in this place where the revival that's springing up right now will intensify and will increase as we get up into those lighthouses and begin to decree the prayer in the book of Revelation. So we see revival happening right now in Asbury College or University. Where else are you seeing revival? I'm seeing revival in, in Asbury. I'm seeing revival in Florida. The Lord was showing me different pockets in Florida. And not just that, I was able to see the states that were really hit hard and a lot of the churches were shut down. Places like California, places even like Colorado Springs. The Lord was saying to me, there is going to be no state. Every state will have a sparkle. And it's only when these sparkles increase that is going to be um, the clusters that you see. But what's amazing, and how do we know that this is genuine revival? There were marks. The first one, Jenny, is that 
people, you will, this is how you know that this is the revival I'm talking about. It's going to happen among nameless people. People are going to flock from all around the country not to hear a particular name. You're not coming to hear so-and-so. You are coming just to hear and be in the presence of God. Miracles, signs, and wonders will happen because of God's glorious presence, not because of anyone's prayer. You will see different classes of people, colors of people, and ethnic groups. And the Lord said, every pocket will look like heaven. It's not going to be, oh, this is our church, or this is the Hispanic church, or this is this church. No, it's going to be a unity of people just coming to worship God. So I, every single state will actually have a revival because the Lord has his hand on the whole country. The whole has, God has his hand on the whole world, but you will see them and spiking up out of, and there's going to be a hunger in, uh, in, in the heart of young people where right now the church is suffering from the Z generation. They're thinking Gen Z, they are the hardest generation to reach with the gospel god is the one that's reaching them and so it's and and the lord said to me it's in response to what's happening in the lighthouses because there's been many faithful intercessors crying out for young people crying out for revival and it started since that great shaking since a lot of our freedom has been taken away and we can no longer worship like the way we used to worship. God is restoring freedom. God is restoring. But the coming revival will be marked by signs, wonders in the middle of nameless people and among people of all different ethnic groups. And that's how we will know it is that revival that we are talking about. And they will have one, one request. It will be, Lord, come. Lord Jesus come, they will be seeking and praying and pressing in for the second coming of Jesus. That will be the heart of this coming revival. So speaking of revival, can say if someone wants to have a revival or a ministry wants to have a revival, can they bring revival or do they have to wait for the Lord to bring it? How does that work? Because I know there are some people who are like, you know, we're going to have a revival service. So they're planning it. But then there's others who believe that Lord has to bring that. So what do you say about that? I think, oh, I feel that revival starts in the heart. It starts when we come to God and we repent and really, so we can actually, I believe, bring about this revival. How does it, where does, where do we find that in the Bible? In the book of Acts, in chapter 2, when there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in new tongues, and people were telling Peter, "How? Do, what do we do? Like, they're seeing this revival. He said to them, he said, repent of your sins and be baptized so that times of refreshment will come from the Lord. So it was actually up to them to repent of their sins, it was up to them. In other words, and I tell you something, Jenny, when revival broke out in my personal life, it was during a time when I was desperate for God and I was repenting. And when I say repenting, I'm not just talking about repenting of sin. I mean, that's an aspect of it. But repenting means changing the way we think. It's called matanya, comes from the word matanya, which actually means you're going in a direction and you change and take another direction. So it's becoming dissatisfied with our lives. And it's saying to God, God, I want you to come in. And God is faithful to bring about this revival. So a revival doesn't take place when a church organizes a revival service and invites a very famous speaker and everyone's coming to hear so-and-so. I don't believe that that's revival because what tends to happen, and I saw this in church life over and over again, you go and you spend the week and you buy this person's books and you get them to sign your books and it's all great. And then you go back to ordinary life. How many times have we done that? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when we come to God wholeheartedly and we're like, God, 
I am hungry for you. I want you to revive me. Now, I want to define the word revival. Revival means something died and is being revived. So that's what revival is. So it's for people who feel and think that their spiritual life is dead. If I feel, oh, my life is on fire. I am prophesying. I'm prophet so-and-so or I'm apostle so-and-so. I'm telling you, you're not going to get that revival. Let's be honest. Revival is when you come to the Lord and you cry out to him and you're like, Lord, I'm thankful for where you've taken me, but I know there is more and I know that you want to revive me. The other thing in revival is we should never look back. And this is going to scare some people. We should not look back at the book of Acts or look back at previous revivals and cry out, God, would you bring again the Welsh revival? God, would you bring about? No, because God will always do something greater and bigger. So you always look at the disciples in the outpouring of Acts 2. And I'm thankful for that revival, but they were learners. They were the first batch. 2,000 years later, we are to expect more. We are to press in for more. So our heart is not for the world revival. It's not for the revival in Acts 2. It's God, could you bring the greatest revival ever so that nations and multitudes shall see you in a single day? That has to be the understanding of God. I'm pressing in for the greatest revival the world has ever seen. I don't want to go back. If I go back, I'm going back. That means I'm not being revived. Revival means I'm going to step in to do for God to do exceeding abundantly more than I could ever think or imagine. So we need to write down what would be our wildest dreams well God's gonna do more what will be something that we never think could happen God's gonna do more so we're gonna see that the streets are filled with people that what we saw in anyone's days God's gonna do more and that is how we get hungry because we've opened up our heart increased our potential for the greatest revival, greatest release in glory that will ever hit. And what does that do? It positions me in a new place of expectancy. I am expecting. And when I expect, God meets my expectation and does more. But if I'm only expecting to go back to the Welsh revival, that's all I'm going to get. So I don't want to go back to any of this. I'm thankful for them. But God, you are going to do more. So do you believe that the exposure will happen because of the revival that's happening right now? Absolutely. And I tell you something, Jenny. We are stepping into, I love the prophetic. We are stepping, we are in March right now. And there's a lot of exposure. How many cases are being exposed? How many fraud cases are being exposed? And they're being exposed in a very quick and very supernatural way. And so why is the month of March very important? This is the month that most of God's people around the world have just celebrated Purim two days ago. And why is that very important? Because we get to see a, a slave girl who was taken captive. Her name is Esther. And she comes from being a slave or a captive into becoming the queen of Persia into God using her to save her entire nation. Now, that is a great, great deliverance. But for that deliverance to happen, exposure had to happen. God needed to expose Haman before the eyes of the king. But before God did this, God needed to allow Esther to reveal who she is. So the word Esther actually means from in the Babylonian language, hidden. It means to be concealed. The Bible tells us in Esther chapter 2 that her uncle Mordecai gave her that name so that he can conceal her identity and her nationality. So when she entered into the king, king's court, he loved her and he placed the crown on her head because she was God's covenant girl. He didn't know why he liked her. He just liked her. 
But that's because she was connected to who God was. But later on, she needed to have Haman exposed. To do that, she needed to be revealed first. So this is a season where we are moving from being Esther to being a Hadassah. Hadassah is her real Jewish name, and it means to be revealed. When she went into the banquet hall of the king, it wasn't just to tell him about Haman. It was to tell him that this woman whom you loved, whom you chose, is actually Hadassah. She's a Jew. Will you still kill your wife? And it is that that Haman gets exposed that Haman gets hanged, that his 10 children get hanged, that Mordecai is elevated to a new place in the king's court. So what am I saying? That this exposure needs to happen. For it to happen, we need to be revealed as the Hadassahs. We need our new identity. We need to walk in that new identity. The world must know who we are through our love for Jesus, our consecration for King Jesus. It is the time where we, as the body of Christ, are no longer hidden but revealed. And as we start to have our God-given identity revealed, Every Haman is about to be exposed, hanged. And it is in that place where revival will happen. And so what is Purim? It is a time where their sorrow was turned into joy. And it is a time where their mourning was turned into glorious celebration. And I am believing, Jenny, that in the name of Jesus, we are stepping into this right now. We are being revealed. Exposure is taking place. Revival is happening everywhere. And we as a nation and as a world will be celebrating from sorrow into joy and from mourning into celebration. Amen. Amen. So did you see what would happen once the exposure took place and revival happened? Yes, because as the exposure was taking place, what I saw in the encounter was that those demonic buildings were collapsing from inside out. So the exposure is actually going to come from in their midst. And once that happens, what I saw was actually beautiful because where they were, their territory was now occupied by revival. And I said to God, how did this even happen? And God reminded me of Jericho. He said to me, Yvonne, how did Jericho fall? Did it just collapse? And I said, no. He said the priests and God's people literally circled the area and went around the area giving and declaring that victory. So the moment the collapse happened, God's people took over. So we need to be ready to watch out and to begin to take over territories. That is what the kingdom is. God is everywhere, but his kingdom is not everywhere. His kingdom takes place through us. Why? Because we know that the kingdom of God is on the inside of us. We are kingdom carriers. We are kingdom dwellers. So when we are on the lookout and every time someone gets saved, Every time someone gets delivered, you are taking territory because the territory of that person, which used to be controlled by the enemy, is now controlled by the spirit of God. So we need to be on the lookout. We need to be ready. We need to preach the gospel in season and out of season. And as we do that, exposure is ha will happen, but not just that God's people will be ready to go in and occupy. And that is what Jesus taught in one of his parables. He was saying this about a king who left to go for a faraway land. And he told his people to occupy until I come. The kingdom of God is all about occupation, that we would occupy what we have for the king. And so we get to understand that his subjects did not believe he was going to come back. But those who believe, these were the ones who received authority over the cities that were given to them. So we need to understand we've been given authority. We've been given the kingdom. And it is our role, first of all, to get into the lighthouse. 
They begin to intercede for our country, for our village, for our street, for, for where we are. And so to begin to decree, what are we decreeing? Your kingdom come, your will be done. To you be the glory, to you be the honor. And as we declare that, our words turn into life and bring the kingdom of God into those territories. When they're exposed and they're destroyed, we move in. We begin to preach the gospel. We heal the sick. We raise the dead. We allow the kingdom to come through us because the coming revival, Jenny, will not happen among any famous names. I believe that. It's not. It will happen among nameless people. We don't even know their name. They're believing God now. They're faithful. They got, God is going to be using them. And so if we want to be used alongside with them, we come into a place of humility and hunger. And we get to understand that it's all about Jesus. It's all about him. And as we say that, let me tell you, God's going to be using every person who says, me, God, I don't want to miss out, God, use me, God, God will use them. So is this just for the United States of America? No, this is for the world. I live in the United States now, and so I love the United States, and so I'm praying because I want to see that the United States of America has been a blessing to so many different countries. And I must tell you this. My great, great, great grandfather in Egypt, long before I was born, was evangelized by an American missionary. So what a lot of people don't know is that out of America, throughout the years, America sent out so many different missionaries and evangelists to go into different parts of the world and evangelize the gospel. Therefore, I believe that God loves America. And there's going to be a great revival here, but no country will miss out. I see a massive revival breaking out in Australia. And I don't just say that because I'm from there, but I say that because when Australia was found, they called it the southern land of the Holy Spirit. And then it came under immense attack to the level that many believers are not able to worship in freedom. So I believe that God has his hand on Australia and on Africa, and on Asia. In actual word, because the kingdom of God is on the inside of you, wherever you are around the world, you can initiate this revival by just being hungry, by just asking God, would you use me? And I could tell you, Jenny, the map of the world that I saw, revival was coming out of everywhere. Least expected places, least expected names and least expected people. And the Lord said to me, it's going to be among the least expected. Why? Because those who are hungry for the kingdom will bring the kingdom. Amen. Yvonne, could you do what you said you would do earlier? Could yes. you pray for us, everyone watching, everyone listening to enter into the glory of God and for the for us to even walk more into revival so those places who haven't walked into revival yet could you pray that it excels amen 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 let's do that so wherever you are watching from i want you to be in a place of expectancy don't just feel that this is online god is the one his holy spirit is the one who is able to touch you but just be hungry so wherever you are just lift up your hands to the lord and just begin to invite the holy spirit father i thank you holy spirit we welcome you right now and i invite your holy presence i invite your holy presence intensify your presence we honor your presence and lord i just thank you i thank you for this moment father in the name of jesus every person who is watching in the name of jesus i just ask right now holy spirit that you would bring about a holy fire a hunger god that you would touch their hearts right now god with this hunger god that they're watching this and I see so many of you like weeping in the spirit. You would be weeping saying, God, I'm not missing out on this. 
I want to be hungry. Father, every person who is crying out to you right now, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would touch them with hunger right now. Thank you because hunger is being installed. It's being initiated. It is being birthed in the heart of everyone who is watching right now. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask right now for this corporate deliverance of our mind. Lord, every lie, every excuse we have created, God, for not being able to enter into the heavenly realms, help us to renounce it right now. So I just want to take this time. I want you to begin to renounce every lie that you have believed over yourself. Every lie, I want you to say, Father, I renounce unbelief right now in the name of Jesus. I renounce the belief that I can't enter heaven until I die. I renounce this lie right now. I want you to say, God, I renounce the idea that I'm not worthy enough, though, that I have not done enough or that I don't qualify. I renounce right now. I want you to say, I renounce fear and torment and depression. Every thought that says that this is not for me, that she's not talking to me. Yes, God's talking to you. God is pointing at you. So I want you to take those moments and just to say, I renounce every demonic lie, every accusation that's coming against me, every condemnation that is hindering me right now. I renounce it in the name of Jesus right now. And I want you to invite the love of Jesus. Just open up your heart and just say, Lord, I invite your love to just come and just take a hold of my heart. I invite you right now. I invite this peace and joy to just come upon me. And I want you just to be in a resting position. And now I want to pray for the opening of your spiritual heart, eyes, ears, and mind. Father, in the name of King Jesus, right now, God, I take authority in the spiritual dimension and Father, I speak to the heart, to the mouth, to the eyes, to the ears, and to the mind in the spiritual dimension. And I just command them to be opened right now. In Jesus' mighty name, I rebuke and I renounce every spiritual blindness, every spiritual muteness, every spiritual deafness. In the name of Jesus, I renounce it right now. And I speak to those dimensions to be opened. I pray right now that your mind be opened. I pray for the heart area, the ear and the eyes be open in the spiritual dimension in the name of King Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In this glorious place of resting, I want you to see in the mind, in your spiritual mind, what God is doing. Some of you, you'll be seeing a, a mental image of God embracing you. Here we go. God embracing you. I just want you to rest and just to allow God to embrace you. Someone else, you might see yourself in a garden where you're just walking around with God the Father and he's just holding your hand. What do you see? Someone else, you could just be yourself just kneeling down in prayer and God has his hands over you. Whichever mental picture that you see, I want you to say, God, I believe it. God, I believe that I'm not making this up. God, I believe that this is you. I want you to say, God, take me further. God, take me deeper. And I want you to begin to release your spirit wherever it is. Feel free to walk around in this place. Feel free to touch, feel free to smell, feel free to speak with God, feel free to open up your heart. This is such a sacred moment right now between you and God. So don't even rush this place, don't even rush this time. Some of you, you could just be resting. You could be seeing a river or you could be smelling a flower. What is God doing from where you are? Where is God? What is he saying to you? What is he asking you to do? Don't rush. Just let yourself hear and see and smell and love. 
Feel free to come close to Father God and just embrace him. Feel free to just be resting. Father, in the name of Jesus, those right now who are believing you, God, those who are believing that this invitation is for them, I just ask, Lord, that you take a hold of them right now. Take him deeper. Father, in the name of Jesus, intensify your love. Intensify your Holy Spirit. I just release this importation, Father. I see and feel that God is healing your heart right now. God is removing foreign objects that caused you pain. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. I see God touching bodies right now. And I just see that cancer is shriveling and dying. I see people being healed of so many different conditions. I see Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you're in this position, don't even feel that you need to go anywhere. Father, I thank you for revival, that you are right now raising up intercessors, God, to go up in their lighthouses and speak revival. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for exposure. I thank you, Lord, that exposure is coming. And I thank you, Lord, that Jericho is being destroyed from the inside out. And I just see, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the revival, God, you showed me in every state and in every different part of the world will be ignited, God. Thank you, Lord, for Times Square. Thank you, Lord, for people gathering all around Washington, D.C. Thank you, Lord, for prayer. Thank you, Lord, for you've got your hands, God, on this world. Thank you, Lord, for what you are doing. I thank you, Lord, because this revival is coming. So, God, we repent right now before you. We repent corporately, God. And we say, as you talk, God, to you be the honor, to you be the glory, to you be the power. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that we repent of compromise, God, that we repent, Lord, of engaging with worldly activities that's demonic. And we come, God, wholehearted you before you. Fill us afresh in the Holy Spirit. If you've never received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, this is your time now. Lift up your hands. God said it's like a gift. Father, those that are believing, I pray a fresh baptism in the Holy Spirit right now. Here it comes. Father, in the name of Jesus, pour out your spirit over those that are watching, those that are crying, those that are weeping, that they are taking a step right now, Father, and receiving the divine invitation for this gift. I thank you, Lord, because those many will be seeing dreams, visions. I thank you, Lord, for a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Ivana Tia, you never cease to amaze. You never cease to disappoint because God is so much in you. I mean, that prayer was so powerful. I believe that so many people not only were healed in their body, but in their spirit as well. So thank you so much. And in their soul. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I am so thankful for you and for this powerful ministry. Thank you so much. Amen. That was good, Yvonne. I love that prayer.